Matt from the Man Cave. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your daily devotion for August the 30th. Hope you're having a totally awesome day. Guys, I'm standing right now here in a rock bed. It is one of my absolute favorite places to do my devotions, to do filming. And why is that? It's beautiful. It's God's creation. You know what? I'm talking about loving it. Welcome to the Man Cave. Hoo hey guys, today we're going to be in the book of Job. We're in chapter 42. We're looking at just a simple verse, which is verse 5. It reads like this. It's a, it, I thought it read like this, but here's the thing. Obviously, it's not going to read like this because it disappeared. Here it is. Listen to how this reads. It says, I have heard of you by hearing of my ear, but now my eyes see you. Guys, most of us have heard the story about Job, okay? And when we hear it, it's like the hair on the back of our neck stands up, okay? Job, okay, was wiped out. How, how'd that happen? God gave permission gave permission to Satan to take everything he owned and then to go after his health, okay? And here's the thing. When we look at the story of Job, okay, I, I'm, I'm telling you, it's one that sobers all of us up because nobody, and I mean nobody, I mean nobody, wants to go through what Job went through, okay? But during his suffering, okay, during the heartache, during the pain, one of the things that he was trying to figure out was this, why? Why is this happening to me? And the reason he's asking why is this. During Job's time, there was no one more righteous than Job. Okay, those are God's words. Okay, and what I'm saying is if Job has been living his life for the Lord, doing all the things that the Lord would require, not perfectly, guys, guys, not perfectly, okay, but with the best of his strength and ability, okay, trying to maintain the law of God, okay, that's written in his heart, because we know by this time, God hadn't given us the law, okay, but there's a law that's written in our heart and our conscience, we know right from wrong, okay. Again, how do we know that Job was righteous? Because God points him out to Satan. You listen to this. This whole thing, when we look at the book of Job, started with God. It didn't start with Satan just picking Job out. No, God says, have you considered my servant Job? And the next words that come out of the mouth of Almighty God are describing him as a person of righteousness, a person of integrity, a person, okay, of holiness, okay, who's running away from evil, who's doing all the right things. And again, not perfectly, okay, but to the best of his ability. Here's the thing. Jesus hadn't come yet, but what Job was doing was picking up his cross daily and following following God. He was doing the things he knew God wanted him to do. Well, let's fast track it, okay? When we go through the story of Job, Job has three friends that aren't really friends, okay? Job wants an audience with God because he truly believed, hey, I've been living righteousness. Why did you Look, at, look, he's putting the finger in God's face. Why did you allow this to happen to me? I want your audience. I want to talk, okay? God takes him up on the offer, okay? And once God shows up, here's the thing. We're speechless. I know a lot of people, they think, when I get in front of God, I'm going to say this, 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 and this. No, you won't. When you're in front of brilliance and holiness and purity, when you're in front of the glory of God, you're speechless. And I can tell you that for a fact. You are absolutely speechless. You can't even put two words together. You'll say nothing. Those people who blabber off that they're going to say this and this and justify their sinful lifestyle, it's foolishness. It's just, you know what? You're an idiot. You're not going to do any such thing. You see, you're comparing your intellect, your knowledge, your wisdom, your reasoning to man. Okay, we're on a higher level now, baby. We're talking about God Almighty, okay? Get off that soapbox because it's not going to pan out in the long run, okay? Repent, turn from, turn towards God. Tell him you're sorry while you still have time. That's free. God takes Job up on the offer. Listen very carefully. God takes him up on the offer and he shows up in a theophany, okay? In a whirlwind, in a tornado. God shows up in a theophany in this whirlwind, okay? Showing, showing some of his manifestation of his power, his glory, his might. Okay. He asked Job a series of questions over about four chapters, none of which Job can answer, okay? At the very end, in chapter 42, Job says this, I've heard of you by hearing of my ear, but now my eye sees you. I'll zip it. That's what Job says. I, I'm not, I can't say anything. I'm stupid. I'm dumbstruck. You're right. I'm wrong. See, God doesn't have to speak a word, but when you get in the presence of God, you know, meaning he imparts that wisdom, that knowledge, that understanding to you, where you understand that your claims against him, they fall void. 
Do you understand? Like, well, Matt, why did God do this? There's characteristics of God that we're only going to learn through adversity. We're only going to learn, okay, the hard way. Nobody will sign up for it. Meaning if God put out a sheet of paper like in the front of the church, you know, he wants everybody to bring a potluck dish and it says, uh, learn about God through adversity, pain, and suffering. Nobody's going to sign up, okay? And he, I don't care how much the, the preacher's pushing that agenda, pushing that, hey, you guys ought to do this. You ought to join in and, and get a hold of this. And once you do, you're going to be the better for it. No one's signing we're in up. the storm and we're being put through the storm, okay? Listen, we're learning about Almighty God. And you're like, well, how is that? Friends, I don't know how it is, but it's a true statement. Everything that God blessed Job with did not teach Job anything about God other than God is a generous God. He's mercy. He's love. He's all these different things. Yeah, yeah. But what Job needed to learn was only going to be taught in the school of hard knocks. Some of you know what I'm talking about because some of you have been there and some of you are enrolled even right now. My wife was just telling me that she was laughing, okay? That's where you have to be drafted. Almost, you know, the pastor almost has to put the guilt trip on you, okay? Or it has to be chosen for you. That's what happened to Job. God loved Job, okay? One of the things that Job learned during this thing, okay, the book of Job, okay, this suffering that he went through, that God never left him. He felt like he did, but God was always with him through the pain, through the suffering, through everything that was taking place. God did not forsake Job. Job had to learn that the hard way. He had to realize no matter what we go through and no matter what Job went through, God is always with us, okay? It doesn't matter how disobedient you are, how much darkness you've entered into, how much sin you're engaged in, God hasn't left you. You still have the opportunity in this life to call out, to repent, to get it right with God. And He wants you to do that. And He's encouraging every last person on the face of the earth to get right with Him before His Son comes back or before they die without Him in death. Let me just share this with you. Job was smart. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Job was very intelligent. He was very wise. But he wasn't as wise as God. He wasn't as smart as God. He, he didn't, you see what I'm saying? Oftentimes, I think a lot of people, they think of God as like another person that's just a little bit smarter. Friends, here's the thing. We're not even in the same category when we're talking about the intelligence of Almighty God. Even the words that I use do not describe Him. I always use the word like this. God's really smart. You know what I'm saying? Or He's wise or He's brilliant. No, talking word. about God, we're, we can't really, we do. Because I'm trying to, I'm just, I'm describing a word picture to you, trying to get you to get a glimpse. I can't describe God perfectly. I use the word smart. He's brilliant. He has a PhD. No, it's beyond that. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient, meaning he's all powerful. Everything is in his presence and he knows everything. Hey guys, when we read our text today, a lot of it, it just probably went right over your head like it did mine the first time, where it says this, I heard about you with the hearing, meaning this, he knew a little bit, but he had not experienced God. He had an intellectual knowledge of God, but as he suffered greatly, he became to know God through his sufferings. Now he can say, I see God. I see it. I understand it. I've lived it. He hadn't lived it before this time. Everything was good for Job. Job, he knew about God, but he didn't know God. Through the suffering, he now can see the hand of God and he can actually see God. He's experienced God. Friends, until you experience God, and I mean experience Him in a mighty way in your life, you're missing something. A, a lot of people, they write me and they say, Matt, I feel empty on the inside. And yes, I am a Christian, Matt. And yes, Matt, I, I am uh, obedient to God, to, you know, not to the letter of the law, but I'm doing my best daily. And, and yes, Matt, I love these letters. Yes, Matt, um, I'm turning from my sins and I'm turning to God. And, and yes, Matt, I, I'm, I'm staying away from wild women and drink and drugs, okay? And I'm not into pornography. And they almost describe the life that they're living, and I'm glad that they do. But I'm still empty. Why? Until we experience God, we don't really know God. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you're like, well, Matt, how do I experience God? It has nothing to do with you. See, you knowing God has everything to do with God 
and little to do with you. All you are responding to is what's going on around you. And oftentimes, we don't understand what's going on. And, and here's the thing, we're not welcoming it, okay? Job learned the characteristics of God through the suffering. God was revealing this about himself, and this about himself, and this about himself. And when the three friends were badgering him, okay, he learned this about God. I mean, he just kept on learning life lesson after life lesson. Guys, I've learned in my life that hard times and hard suffering kind of reveals what's on the inside. We don't know ourselves. God knows us, but we don't know ourselves. We don't know how we'll react, what we'll do, what we'll be like until we're placed into the fire. And in all of this, the greatest thing that Job learned about God was this. God's trustworthy and he loves me. See, he finally got that in the innermost part of him. He, we, he, even though he's going through all this and he didn't understand it, he got to the place where, hey, I can trust God. He has my best interest at hand. He's looking out for me. Even if I don't understand it, even if I don't like it, he's trustworthy. And here's the thing, he loves me just as I am. Job understood he wasn't a perfect person. Listen to this. After Job had suffered so greatly, okay, and after God had showed up, on the scene and talk to Job. And Job says, Lord, oh my goodness. He says, I've heard of you, but now I see you. Meaning now I've experienced you through the suffering and the pain. God says in chapter 42, verse 10, he says this, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job. Meaning this, within one minute, everything changed. As soon as God spoke the words, it, it was over. Now God is going to restore Job. All the fortunes, all the blessings, God's presence, okay, his favor, everything's going to be given back to Job and God's going to multiply the years that he's given Job because now Job knows God. Guys, what you're not going to see that's there is Job finally put up the white flag. Job surrendered. See the whole story of Job, he's crying out, I want an audience with God. But now he's got to the place where I trust God. Whatever you do is right, okay? I surrender. What happens once Job surrendered? He was doubled up. He was blessed. He understood things like he had never understood before. God imparted himself into Job, okay? His life changed from then on, and the rest of his days he lived in the fullness, in the zeal of the Lord. Friends, I want you to live that way too. But it may require going through the fire, okay? You're like, man, I don't want that. You do, you just don't know it, okay? And actually, can I tell you something? It's not your choice. You don't get to choose. When God chooses it for you, just keep the right attitude when you're going through it. God hasn't left you, God hasn't forsaken you, okay? When you come through, you'll be restored, you'll be blessed, you'll be the better for it. Hey, I know this was a hard one, guys, okay? And here's the thing, to some of you, you're in it right now. You're being driven down. God loves you. Don't forsake him, okay? Hold tight, hold fast. You'll make it through, okay? When you do, you'll be shining, you'll be beautiful, okay? God will have accomplished that which you wanted to do in your life, and God will not be indebted to any Anyone, he will restore you. Hey, this is Matt from the Man Cave.